Come on, everybody. Can we rejoice this morning? Psalms 34 and 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Have you showed up this morning on a Sunday morning to exalt the name of the Lord? Come on, let's make him feel welcome this morning. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord today. We've got a good-looking crowd this morning. Let's give all of our visitors a hand clap. I was so glad to see my dear friend, Brother Haitley, come in today. He had messaged me a couple days ago and said he was going to be coming back towards this way. And I'm glad to see him this morning. I love him dearly. Let's make him feel welcome today. Even though he's moved away from us to Texas, he's still a part of us. And I love that man dearly. I love every single one of you. I don't want you to feel left out today. But most importantly, God loves you. Aren't you thankful for the love of Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to start this morning with prayer. Uh, I actually taught this morning to the youth. Been doing a little series with them calling Disconnect in Order to Reconnect. And today I talked about the tool of prayer and how it can get us connected to God in a disconnected world. I'm so thankful when I begin to call on the name of Jesus. He hears me and he begins to move on our behalf. So that's what we're going to do this morning. Uh, let's keep uplifting a few of these requests. Sister Helen Sellers, uh, Carolyn Lloyd, uh, Brother Chad and his family, uh, Kayla Kemp. Let's keep remembering the Woodruff family, uh, Robert Lee, Jackie Jernigan, uh, Kirk Thurman. Um, also, there's a need this morning. I believe it's the first time it's been on our list. Uh, Ann Baker, uh, and from the report that I have, it says she is on life support and needs a miracle. How many knows today we serve a miracle working God? Come on, do you believe that with me this morning? We serve the great I am. We serve the Alpha and the Omega. I serve the beginning and the ending. He's above all and through all. And there's none like him. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. And I believe today that God can move upon that situation. I speak it out of faith that good reports is going to come from this situation. Do you believe with me this morning? Come on. Am I in the midst of some believers? Has God ever done anything for you? Let me ask you that. Has God ever intervened on your behalf? Let's keep uplifting uh, Adrian Cummings. Uh, all of these needs are very special today, and I'm sure that many of us today have needs. So in this moment, go ahead and let your hand go before heaven. Let the other go in surrenderance to him, faith believing that he can move the mountain. God, we come before you today. God, I'm asking that you would move upon each and every request. God, I know that you are still the miracle working God. That scripture tells us. I know that you are still the way making God where there seemeth to be none. Lord, I feel like many of us have walked in today looking at the Red Sea before us. But God, you can still split that Red Sea and make a highway just like that. I speak the power of God upon every mind, upon every heart in this sanctuary today. Let your Shekinah glory begin to rain from heaven. God, we want heaven to come down to earth on this beautiful morning that you have given us. God, take full authority and full power and control over this very service. Remove every self-affliction. Remove every self-desire and want in this place. Help us to begin to get in the spiritual mindset of you today. God, we give all of these needs uh, and requests unto you. Uh, hallelujah. We give it to your name today, Jesus. Uh, give him a hand clap of praise this morning. You know, you, you just have to excuse me. But you know, time and time again, God's always been there. I feel like somebody needs a reminder today. That's why I get so excited about prayer. 
because I know that there's been moments I needed God out of desperation to move and it was just a matter of time he began to move on my behalf you say well preacher why are you saying that this morning because he is no respecter of person if he can do it for brother Tanner he can do it for brother Chris if he can do it for him he can do it for you today Hallelujah. One more time, give him a hand clap of praise. He deserves it. We're going to go right into our tithes and our offerings today if our ushers would be making their way. Uh, I have just a few uh, announcements I'm going to make known real quick. Uh, everybody say, this Friday, anniversary service starting at 730 uh, prayer will be starting at 7. We'll have Brother Lambert from Iuka Pentecostal Church. He's going to be preaching, and I'm excited to hear what he has to say, what the Lord has to say for the church. I'm excited. Uh, a reminder, uh, this coming Wednesday night, there will be no midweek service. But we need everyone that is able and available to come and volunteer. We're going to try to get the church and the fellowship hall ready for homecoming weekend. So this is a perfect time to display how much you love your church by serving your church. Pastor didn't pay me to say that. That's, that's free. Uh, but we need to serve. We need to help. So volunteer. We're going to meet uh, Wednesday afternoon just when you can get here, probably after 5, 530. As soon as you can get here. The sooner the better. So uh, let's, let's be preparing for that. Um, also, don't forget... Uh, September the 4th, which is Sunday, next Sunday, is our homecoming. And we will be taking up that special offering for the land. So uh, be preparing for that. I'm excited, looking forward to what God's going to do. Uh, so at this time, let's give back to the Lord as He's given to us. And you know, the Bible says He loves a cheerful giver. Don't give just because you have to. But you have the opportunity to give to God. We have the privilege and the honor to give to him this morning. So be a cheerful giver and watch what he'll do for you. Let's give to the Lord this morning. Thank you to all for giving this morning. I know God's going to bless it, give it back to you, shaking together, running over. You can't outgive God. I'm so thankful that whatever we give to Him, He blesses us so much in return. I want to leave us with a reminder this morning. I'm reminded of uh, the story of the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. And the Bible goes on and it, it tells that she had spent all that she had. I've come to remind somebody, you know, out of her perseverance... And her determination, she heard that the Savior was walking by. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'll be made whole. But I don't want to talk about the determination to push past the mess that she was in. But the Bible said she had spent all she had. I feel like many of us have walked in today and we have exalted every avenue possible. 
But when it come down to it, she said, but if I can just get to, to Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost today. I want to remind you, if you've tried every avenue, every distraction or addiction or temptation, how about this morning you let go of the hurt and the pain and you just try Jesus. He might have done, somebody might have hurt you along the way, but won't you just try Jesus one more time if you've exalted every possible situation just try Jesus how many needs him to move this morning Come on, how many of you need him to intervene on your behalf? How many needs a miracle? How many needs a healing? How many need some strength in the building today? Come on, it's okay to get a little crazy. It's okay to get a little uncomfortable because we serve a God that is possible. But you have to be willing to try Jesus. Let's worship with the worship team. children of Israel dropped out the Red Sea by that mean old Pharaoh and his army they had a water all around them and old Pharaoh at their backs from out of nowhere God stepped in and cut a highway just like that let me tell you
when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Even when we don't see him, he's working. Even when we don't feel him, he's working. But I know one thing right now, he's working right now. He's working right now. Would you let him work on you right now? God, I need you to heal this brokenness. I need a miracle today, God. I feel abandoned. I feel all alone. I need you to work on me today. I, I, I've walked in discouraged. I, I, I've walked in at my wit's end, God. And I'm grasping for something. I need you to work on me today. Oh, there's power in your name. I speak the name of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus over you. I speak the name of Jesus over every bit of anxiety, over every bit of depression, over every bit of uncertainty. Oh, we need you today, Jesus. Somebody's in need of you today, God. I'm thankful for the promise that he may not get there when we want him to.
but he shows up right on time. Today might be behind schedule for you, but to somebody it could be God's perfect timing to reach down this morning and to make a difference in your life. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord and magnify him? Thank you for your presence here today, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You can be seated. You can go back to your seats. Thank you for your response to the word. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, worship team. Thank you for being here uh, with us today. If you're a guest in the building with us, God bless you. So glad you came to worship with us. Let's give our guests a hand clap. Let them know how thankful we are. You could have picked a hundred other churches to go to, but you picked here this morning and... Uh, I believe God wants to meet you here today. And uh, I believe somebody is going to be changed before we leave this house today. I believe somebody, if you'll take hold to the word of God, is wanting to change you. Because there's a reason you got up and come to church this morning. There's a reason that you got up and come to church this morning. Let me read a few verses for us here out of the book of Genesis, beginning with chapter 35. I'm so thankful for our ministry here at this church, uh, every one of our leaders, our Sunday school teachers, every bit of leadership, so thankful uh, for them. And we've got Brother Dylan, where'd he go? Did he walk out? Come on up here, Brother Dylan. Let's bring him up here. When we think of ministry, we think of a pulpit. Brother Dylan, he's one of the most faithful men we have here. He's not able to be here every service. He's down in Jackson, getting a big degree. He won't let you know it, but he's really smart. He's just so disappointed he got a 98 instead of 100 the other day on that test. (laughs) He plays for us here. Brother Dylan, I want you to be in prayer for him because uh, how many is it? He's got about six young men down at Jackson that he's going to be starting a Bible study with. And I'm proud of him. I want to let him know how proud I am of him. Uh, Ministry is far outside of a pulpit. And so I want us to lift him up and just let him know how thankful we are for him. We're going to be praying for you, brother. Love you. Hey, you can teach a Bible study too. If you need one, I got one you can have. God can use you to make an impact on somebody's life. And so let's be praying for him. Genesis chapter 35 Let's read four verses here. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean. And change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel. Or he said, let us arise and go up to the house of God. And I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress. Aren't you thankful for a God who shows up when we're in distress? I believe he's going to meet somebody right in the middle. Of your distress this morning. Right in the middle of your pain. And was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand. And all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak. Which was by Shechem. I want to preach this morning just for the next little bit. On the power of his presence. The power of his presence. You have not just walked into another building today. Just not walked into another gathering, but we have come in the presence of the Lord today. And I want to talk to you about what happens when people get together in the presence of the Lord. Will you lift your hands and pray with me today? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you know every need and every situation under the sound of my voice. You know every person, every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. Father, you've showed up here for somebody today. And I pray, God, whatever it takes 
that you would draw them to the place that they need to be in you. If their soul is hanging in the balance today, I pray there be a divine intervention and impartation of your spirit here today, God. Let somebody leave this house changed and transformed. I pray it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name this morning. We find a man by the name of Jacob who most of us, you may not know much about Jacob, but I'll tell you a little bit about him. He was a lot like me and you. He was a scoundrel. He was a liar. He was a cheater. He was a surplanter. Tricked his own father, tricked his own brother to get what he thought was rightfully his. I think a lot of us can relate to Jacob. Now, I know you may have everything together, but I hadn't always had everything together. I can relate to Jacob. I know what it was like to be a liar. I know what it was like to be a cheat. I know what it was like to be the scum of the earth. And Jacob was no different. He had his struggles. He had his difficulties. But there was something about Jacob that stood out that despite his problems and despite his past and despite everything that he was, there was an anointing and a purpose that was upon his life. And I come to tell somebody in this house today, I'm here to call out to a Jacob and let you know despite what you are currently, you can't get away from the fact that God's hand is upon your life. You try to run from it. You try to get it off your mind. You try to draw yourself away from the feelings. But still, I'm talking to somebody here this morning that has been feeling a tug from God in the middle of your sin and in the middle of your temptation. You still feel that drawing and that desire from something that is greater and more powerful than you. Jacob had burned bridges he had betrayed his brother and so his father sent him out from the house and said you gotta get out of here if you don't your brother's gonna kill you Sometimes our only answer is to run from the mess that we have made Who am I talking to here today? Running from the very mess that you made and the bridges that you burned. But instead of dealing with them, you chose to turn your back and to go from them. We find that on his way, the Bible says, Jacob was headed there and he went out to, from Beersheba and he went toward Haran and he lighted upon a certain place and he tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and he put them for his pillows and he laid down in that place to sleep and he dreamed and behold, a ladder set on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it and behold the Lord stood above it and he spoke to this scoundrel he spoke to this surplanter he spoke to this liar and this cheat he spoke to this man who was full of mistakes pain and heartache and he said I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac he began to give him a word and some promises and look what he said behold I am with thee and I will keep thee and I will bring thee again into this land and I will not leave thee 
it stands out to me so much today that God was willing to show up in the life of a man who had no business with God showing up for him. I come to tell you I'm thankful for a God who's willing to show up right in the middle of my mess, right in the middle of my pain, right in the middle of my sin. I don't deserve it. I didn't do nothing to deserve it. I deserve death. I deserve pain. I deserve to be consumed. But still God said, you don't know it. But when you lay down your head, I'm going to meet you in that place. <laughs> Jacob. I want to let you know, despite what a mess you made, if you'll get a hold of me, I got a purpose for your life. I know you're thinking in your mind, Jacob, I've made a mess. I'm going to have to suffer the consequences. But God stepped on the scene and said, hey, young man, don't give up. I'm in this thing. I want to let somebody know you don't have to die in your dilemma. You don't have to die in your uncertainty. You don't have to run away from the presence of God. He's here this morning and he wants you to know I'm the same God to you that I was to Jacob. And so he began to look around. Jacob began to look and he said, he woke out of his sleep And he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. And he was afraid. And he said, how dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. He was right when he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And he named it Bethel, which meant the house of God. God made such an impact on him that there was nothing inside of him that doubted whether he existed, that doubted whether he cared about him, that doubted where he loved about him. I come to let somebody know today, if you'll get in here, presence you'll understand what kind of purpose you have in him because it's when we're in his presence that we start to see what I'm going through is not really that big of a deal what I'm facing is not really that big of a problem when God comes down we start to see anything is possible anything can happen if God can use anybody he can use me I come to tell you, I fear ever walking into a house of God and walking in and not being able to feel the presence of God. That's why I come into this place. I need another dose of the presence of God in my life. You may not. You may have it all together. You may have everything going just like you do. But I want to tell you and preach to somebody here. You didn't just come this morning because you thought it would be a good idea. You didn't just come this morning to hear some good singing and a little preaching. But I believe you come this morning just maybe, maybe God will be in that place when I get there. Just maybe Maybe God will come down from heaven and visit me in that church house this morning. Just maybe he loves me enough to show up in what I'm going through. I come to tell you, you are right. He's here. He's in our midst. He's here this morning and he's wanting to reach out in somebody today and let you know, don't give up just yet. I still got a plan for you. I still got a purpose for you. My hand is still upon you.
I want to let this church know I never want this just to become a place with four walls and a platform and a pulpit. I want God to dwell in this place. I want him to be here every time the doors are opened up. I want him to be a miracle worker every time we step in this house because without him we can do nothing. I can't save your soul. I can't fix your problem. I can't give you enough counsel and enough wisdom. But if he shows up, if he comes in, if he's here, anything is possible. Am I standing in the presence of anybody today who believes that anything is possible? Am I standing in the presence of anybody today who believes God still makes all things new? Am I standing in the midst of an audience today that still believes he turns drug addicts into disciples? He turns alcoholics into apostles? Am I talking to anybody who believes he still turns whoremongers into prayer warriors I'm serving a God who can we can't do it I don't have the answer but he does he does he does I pray God would meet somebody in such a supernatural way today that it forever impacts and changes your world. That way you leave here saying, how did I ever not give in to him? I never knew he loved me like that. I never knew the purpose he had for me. The house of God is a place where we come and Many of you may not understand today why, why is he yelling so much up there? Why does it seem like he's screaming to us? Why, why do they sing so loud? Why is the music so loud? Why do they run around in here? Why do they jump up and down? Because it's not every time we get to come and hang out in the presence of the Lord. I, I know he's everywhere, but there's just some places I, I, I can't get to him like I can get to him when I'm here. If you could have got to him at the ball game, you'd have been there today instead of here. If you could have got him sitting on your couch, you'd have been sitting there today. But there's some places and some promises that God gave. And he said, my name is going to be there. And my ears are going to be there. And my eyes are going to be there. I want somebody to get his attention today and cry out to him and say, God, if you're here, I need you to work on me. If you're here, I need you to change me. We have church a little bit different than other people. But we've had different experience than other people as well. Reading the book of First Chronicles chapter 15. Brother, I've got a rag over there somewhere. It may be in my jacket. First Corinthians chapter 15. The Bible says that David was clothed with a robe of fine linen and all the Levites that bear the ark and the singers and Shanae, the master of the song of the singers, David also had upon him an ephod of linen. Thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord. If you're not familiar with what the ark of the covenant of the Lord is, this was the presence of God. David was bringing up the presence of the Lord. And look how they brought the presence up. With shouting. And with the sound of the cornet and with trumpets, and with cymbals, making a noise, with psalteries and harps. And it came to pass as the Ark of the Covenant, or as the presence of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michael, the daughter of Saul, 
looking out a window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. This woman was looking at David, which had been her husband, out of a window, another building. She was not outside with him. She was not connected to the presence. And so it was hard for her to understand how a man can dance so foolishly and how people can be so excited and how they can play music and sing and dance and do all these things because she wasn't in the midst of the presence. She wasn't in the midst of her presence and better yet, Brother Chris, Michael had to understand that it wasn't that David was just in his presence. It was that there was a time in David's life where he was living in a cave and on the run. There was a time that he didn't know whether he was gonna live or whether he was gonna die. There was a time in his life where he couldn't tell if he was anointed or if God was just trying to kill him. He didn't understand everything that was going on. So she had to understand, Brother Tanner, when the presence of God met him, he had to do something because she didn't understand. This is what I've been waiting on. This is what I've been praying for. This is why I came. This is why I told him to go get the presence of the Lord. I come to talk to somebody today that's been longing to be in the presence of the Lord. Maybe you feel forsaken. Maybe you feel like he don't have an answer for you. But the presence of the Lord is here today. I'm going to tell you, as long as I'm pastor here at this church, there's going to be some shouting going on. There's going to be some music playing. There's going to be some songs being sung about Jesus. There's going to be some dancing. There's going to be some shouting. There's going to be some running. Why? Because we're in his presence. And you may peer into the window and say, how foolish are them? I wish I could tell Michael, your problem is, is you need to come out here and get a little closer to the presence. Because if you got close, you probably have a dance too. If you got close, you probably sing too. But you know probably what Michael's problem was, Brother Chris? She was too used to living in the palace. Didn't have no hard times. She didn't ever deal with, couldn't get off the bottle. Didn't ever deal with, couldn't get across out of addictions and life and things. She she was okay, you know, preacher's kid or maybe somebody who just grew up in church and and they didn't do that things that way so it's easy for them to look through the window and say how foolish are them people how foolish can they be dancing around acting like a bunch of hoodlums I wish I could tell somebody here today if you knew what some of us came out of you dance with us to Michael if you knew what I've been through you'd understand why I have a dance you'd understand why I can't contain myself when the spirit of God moves in you understand why I can't sit still because God saved me from hell And I owe, I owe everything to him. I owe it all to him. I'll dance for you, Lord. I'll sing for you, God. I'll live for you. I owe it all to you. 
It's about time somebody takes off your garments of sackcloth and sadness and depression and you put back on that garment of praise. You put back on that dancing shoes and say, I'm going to dance till I get what I need. I ain't sitting still. I ain't going to be dead today. I'd rather be a dancer. My dance might not look like your dance. And my shout may not look like your shout. But my past don't look like your past. And my, 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 my victories, they don't look the same as yours. And my losses, they sure don't look the same. And you may have fallen down less times than I have. I'm just thankful to be here. I'm just thankful I was able to get up this morning and put on my clothes, get in my car, walk into the house of God. I'm just thankful I'm here and not in a jail cell. I'm thankful. I'm here instead of a rehab. I am thankful. I'm thankful. I could have been six foot under. I could have been on the psych floor in the hospital. But thanks be to God. He lifted me up. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to praise his name. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. If you need him to show up, why don't you lift a high praise unto the Lord this morning? Oh, yes. Psalms chapter 16 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. I want to tell somebody there's a brand new path for you to walk on. It's not easy. It's narrow. It's not broad. But I'll tell you something. If you'll decide to walk that path, you're going to have a shepherd that's going to be with you. Look what it says. Then it says, In thy presence is fullness of joy. Why are you singing? Why are you dancing? Because I got joy building up inside of me. And the Bible says, The joy of the Lord is mine strength so you don't understand you you think I'm just dancing but really what I'm doing I'm clothing myself in strength I'm getting stronger as I keep dancing I'm getting stronger when I make another lap I start to get that strength that I once had Can I tell somebody today, if you get in and you get in good, the only way you and me are probably going to make it through this thing is to always keep a pair of dancing shoes with us. Because if you're like me, you've been through such depths in hell, it's going to take walking hand in hand with the Lord every step of the way. If you see me getting stagnant, why don't you grab me by the hand and say, come on preacher, will you dance with me? Come on, preacher. Will you make a lap with me? So that's something that goes on in his presence. There's, there's some dance and there's some praise and, and there's some singing. But there's also another thing that happens. There's some understanding that comes when he gets in the room, Brother Ben. David wrote in Psalms, Chapter 7, 3, 3 and 16, he says, When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Hey, let me talk to somebody. Your thoughts have been painful to you. Thinking, why can they do it and I can't? Why am I going through this 
and they are not. It was too painful for him. But you know what he did when times got too hard and it got too painful? Look what it says. Bring us to the next verse, brother. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. When it got too hard for me, I got my suit on and I said, I'm going to the house of the Lord today. Devil said, stay home. God said, you better put your shoes on. Devil said, it ain't worth it. God said, if you'll just get there, I'm already there waiting on you. I walked into the house. I got there. Then something happened. My problems looked a little bit different. The people I was worried about didn't matter no more because God gave me a glimpse. He said, then I understood their end. I remembered again why I come to church the first time. I remembered why I got in this to begin with. I didn't do it for what I could get. I got in it because Jesus died on a cross for me. He shed his blood for me to save my soul from hell. I'm not in it for a Rolls Royce. I'm not in it for all my problems to be fixed. But I'm in it for my soul to be saved. Some understanding that happens. Something else takes place. Genesis 3 and verse 8 through 10 says this. and They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Look what they done. Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. I come to talk to somebody today that's so ashamed. You'd rather sit at home than come to church because you know what's right and you know what's wrong. You know what's sin and you know what is not sin. And so when you hear, hey, God's moving down there at the gospel tabernacle, I'm not there going down there. I want to stay everywhere he's not. I don't want him nowhere near me because this is the same God who told me no, but I've done it anyway. I, have, I, I once had a good relationship with him. Let me talk to a backslider. I once had a good relationship with him, but now I find myself hiding among the trees. And not only am I hiding, but I took my spouse with me. I took my family with me. And so I'm the man of the house, so if I'm hiding, they're hiding too. If I'm not going to church, they're not going to church either. But something happened. God showed up. And God said unto Adam, where are you? He knew where Adam was, knew what tree he was hiding behind, knew when he got there, knew how long he was going to stay there. But he just wanted to hear Adam's voice. Adam, I need you to tell me where you are. Because if you'll acknowledge where you are, I can help you get out. God wants some of us to just acknowledge where we are. God, I do acknowledge I'm messed up. God, I acknowledge I can't, I ain't got the answers. I've been hiding from you. I'm scared because I know even if I do come in your presence, God, that I'm still naked. And that was why they hid themselves because they were naked and they were ashamed. Shame was on them. He said, I, Adam said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. God began to inquire, how'd you get here? What happened? What mistakes did you make? They began to tell him. And of course, 
God gave out judgment to them. Gave out curses to them. And look, here's what I want us to realize. Some of us are hiding ourselves because we're scared of the judgment of God. But look what happens after the judgment. It says, then God made coats of skins and he clothed them. When he found them, they were naked. But by the time he left the scene, they were covered. There was some blood that had to be shed for those coat skins to go on them. I want to tell somebody today, if you'll let God know where you are and you'll begin to converse with him and tell him what you've done, he may give you a little bit of judgment. But before you leave, he can put a covering over you. And you know what that looks like? Crimson blood that will make you white as snow. Let me tell you something else that goes on in an apostolic church. There's some blood covering that goes on. There's some sinners that walk in the back door dirty, but they leave clean and washed by the blood of the Lamb. That's what happens when we get in his presence. We walk in messed up. But by the time we leave, he's gave us a new tomorrow. I'm hurrying. I know y'all want me to hurry. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. I'll preach it anyway. Tuberculosis or no. Pray to God I don't have tuberculosis. I want to bring that on me. You know something else that happens in a God-bought apostolic church? Matthew 18 verse 19 says, Again, I say to you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of of them. Why did I always have confidence even before I was in church that if I come here something was going to happen because I knew I knew there was going to be two or three folks that were going to be living right and were going to be Holy Ghost filled and that they were going to be gathered together in the name that is above every other name. And so I knew every time I walked into this house that God was going to be here. I knew this wasn't just another church that I could get by. I'm not here to bash another church but this ain't another church where I could come and sit on the pew in my sin and not feel any conviction or not feel any wrong but I knew when I walked into this place I better be ready to make my way to the altar because I wasn't going to be able to get away I wasn't going to be able to run because God was going to be there and I knew what he had for me Come on, somebody, it's about time you start letting God make you into who you call he called you to be. We can know when we come together as two or three agree that there's going to be some prayers that's going to be answered in this place. We can know when there's some prayer meetings and two or three agree and say, look, I need you to help me pray. I, I got a lost loved one that I've been praying for and we grab hands with a couple brothers and say, hey, I need you to pray for this with me. Let's agree right now that before they die, God is going to save their soul from hell. I'm telling you, God still moves in prayer meetings. Just ask the church that was sitting there when old Pete started knocking on that door and they ran to the door and was they were blown because he was supposed to be in jail. They were praying for God to intervene and God answered their prayer. Can I tell somebody today, you keep coming, you keep praying, God will answer your prayers. I heard a preacher not too long ago he used to go to some prayer meetings with his grandmother. He said later in his life he was married. 
was around 22 years old. <coughs> he had to take over as youth director. He was playing up stuff. Never really felt, felt the call to preach on his life. But what happened was the person that was supposed to preach the night he organized it, he quit last minute. So this guy's like, well, I, gotta, I guess I got to preach. It's a tough spot to be in. But anyway, he felt God speak to him and give him a word. And so he, God began to deal with him and finally surrendered the call to preach. And there was a lady, I believe, in his church that he was at. And he was, a, he was in his 20s by this time. And this lady come up to him, Brother Tanner, and said, do you remember prayer meetings you used to come to when you was a boy? He said, yeah, I remember. He said, do you remember this particular time when you were in this prayer meeting? He said, lo and behold, I remembered it. He said, you remember the Holy Ghost fell when we were in that place and started to feel the presence of God, but then just like it was cut off. She said, your grandmother looked at me and said, we can't tell him. But God's got a call of ministry on his life. And so she told this brother, she said, I've known all these years the call of a preacher, a call of ministry was on your life. But I never told you. We wanted you to find out for yourself. I want to tell somebody here today, you can't run from the call of God. His callings and his giftings or without repentance. You may never answer the call. You may never accept the gift, but that don't mean that it's not still available. I want to let somebody know, many of us, the reason we are still here is prayers that have been prayed in a prayer meeting. Prayers that have been prayed in a prayer closet. Prayers that have been prayed by relatives. Prayers that have been prayed by a preacher and by a pastor. I'm thankful that God still answers prayers Prayers. Then the last thing I want to deal on that happens when we get together in his presence happens in the book of Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were unified. They were touching and agreeing that this promise that Jesus told us was coming. We believe it's coming. And the Bible says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them. And look what happened. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You want me to tell you what happens when God shows up? There's some tongue talking that starts happening. Sure, you may be opposed to that because you don't understand. You may be opposed to that because you think it's gibberish and it's mess. But I want to tell you something today. If you would get slap dab in the middle of the presence of God, he'd let the Holy Ghost fall on you too. He would let tongues proceed from you too. We've got some people who have made a mockery out of this. We've got some people who are false. There's wolves in sheep's clothing. They're mockers of the Spirit of God. But here's what I know and here's what I believe. That God is still filling people with the gift of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. He'll fill you if you'll get right with him. It was many days they hung out together praying and asking God, but you know what they purposed? They purposed, we're going to keep going back to that place that we know God is. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I want to deal with 
some of our young people today. I want to deal really with everybody. Anybody who's ever been in a youth camp knows how powerful services are. I want you to think back with me. At the times that you have been in one of those church services, and you looked and thought to yourself, how in the world could I ever get away from this? When I get home, I'm laying it all down. When I get back to school, I'm telling them all. When I get back to work, I'm telling them all. I don't care who has something to say about it. I don't care if they make fun of what I'm wearing. I I, I don't care if they make fun because I won't go out with them anymore. I don't care about any of that. You know why? Because you were transformed in his presence. That's why I insist that it is important every time that these church doors are open that we get into the house of God. Because the longer we stay away, the more the thoughts and the intentions and the will that we had when we were down here at the altar fades away. But you know what happens when we continue to come in the presence of God? We continue to remind ourselves why we let God transform us in the first place. I I wish I could tell you how many people have come up to me after a service. I've preached my heart out it had nothing to do with me. God moved through all this place. They come up to me and say, I'm going to start coming to church here. I felt something today when he was preaching that I ain't never felt. I ain't felt it in a long time. I'm going to come back. I never see him walk back in the door. But I know with everything inside of me, if they could just make up their mind every Sunday, every Wednesday, I'm coming. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what I'm going through. I got to get back to the presence of God. Take you back to my original reading. I'm getting ready to close. I'm going to stand to your feet. Worship team, get ready to come. That place, Jacob, that scoundrel, had that interaction. He'd been many years away. He'd accumulated a lot of goods in that meantime. But God spoke to him and said, Jacob, arise. Go up to Bethel and dwell there. Remember, Bethel means house of God. God looked at him and said, Jacob, time for you to go back to that place you felt me the first time Jacob it's time to go back to that place where I've spoken to your life that place where you felt me at the altar that place where you made I made such an impact on you that you took a rock and you poured oil on it and said I'm putting this here because I never want to forget what happened to me here But it had been many years. He had a family. He had friends. But God said, Jacob, I'm calling you back to the house of God. You'll notice what happened. He looked at those. He said, I'm just not going by myself. I'm going to take my whole family. We picked up some things while we've been out of church. But he looked at him, he said, let's lay them down. And take those old clothes you got off. Put on some new clothes. Because I know when I go back to that place, Brother Rogers, he's going to be there. You know when I walk back, he's going to be there waiting on me. And when I walk back into his presence, I want to be ready for whatever he wants to do in my life. I'm calling to somebody today. It's time to go back to Bethel. 
It's time to make your way back to that place where you met him the first time. To that place, that tug on your heart where you knew, I can make it to heaven. I do have a purpose. I am called of God. Young man, let me tell you, come on back home. Come on back to the house of God. That place I met you when you were going through turmoil a year ago, when you come down to the altar, I'm still here, son, but you gotta make your way back to me. Young lady, young, young man, come on. Come back to Bethel today. I'm making a call today to somebody. If you'll make your way back to Bethel, God wants to speak to you today. Come back to his presence. Will you come? Will you come? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Shake up! Come on. Jacob, I know you're a scoundrel, but I'm wanting to meet you here. Adam, come out from behind the tree. I want to clothe you and cover you. Come on. Come on. Jacob, don't leave. Today is the day of salvation. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 